While most people associate the Celts with Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, they can be traced back to the Hallstatt culture that developed around the Danube River in Austria. The dominant Celtics from the East theory places Hallstatt culture in Austria, giving way to the Latin culture and the Celtic language. This series of events sets the stage for the Great Celtic Migrations, which started in roughly 500 BCE and ended around 100 BCE. During these 400 years, the Celts spread out in seemingly endless waves throughout Europe. They raided local tribes and claimed so much territory that by 200 BCE, the Celtic language was being spoken in the modern-day nations of Britain, France, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, the Czech Republic, Poland, Slovakia, Bulgaria, Croatia, Italy, and to a lesser extent, Turkey. Academics have also spearheaded some Celts from the West and Celts from the Center hypotheses in recent years. While it is easy to see that the Celts profoundly impacted the rise of European civilization, it is not easy to see much of anything else. The Celts wrote nothing down, which is evidence to suggest that they scorned the activity, and when they did, it was often with a Latin or Greek alphabet. So, our knowledge of these ancient peoples is limited to what archaeological evidence tells us. There are references to Celtic people in Greek and Roman texts, but these are difficult to take as fact. The Greeks and Romans did not speak Celtic and therefore would have been limited in their ability to communicate. Because of the lack of sources, modern-day perceptions of Celtic culture are typically exaggerated or just plain wrong. Most of us think of the Celts as barbarous, warring people with little or no social structure or value for human life. But this image comes straight from Greek and Roman interpretations of the culture, which does not accurately reflect the ancient Celts. The Greeks and Romans were right that war was essential to Celtic life, but their way of life extended far beyond warmongering. The ancient Celts were devoutly religious and skilled artisans who had a profound impact on the development of European art and culture. However, Despite these redeeming qualities, the Celts were hopelessly disorganized. Hundreds of different tribes that spoke some version of the Celtic language existed throughout Europe, but they rarely, if ever, came together to form a unified culture. It was much more frequent for them to fight one another and rely on a third party, such as the Romans, to help them solve their conflicts. Caesar crushed the Celtic cultural centers at Hispania and Gaul within a decade, but failed to eradicate the Celtic culture. It remained in Britain, and although the Romans later went on to conquer most of the island, they could not destroy all of it. As a result, Celtic culture continued to exist in parts of England, Ireland, Wales, and Scotland. After the Anglo-Saxon invasion of Britain, the Celts crossed the English Channel again, this time settling in the modern French region of Brittany. Around 200 million people in northwestern Europe are native speakers of a Celtic language including 562,000 people in Wales, which is 19% of its population. Celtic culture has remained strong in Europe, persisting to this day. It is important to note one other aspect of Celtic culture, which is the diversity that existed within it. More specifically, we must understand that the group of people we refer to as Celts consisted of many different distinct tribes who shared the same culture and language. They all spoke different Celtic dialects and had unique cultural practices despite being similar. Various include the Celtiberians from the Iberian Peninsula, the Gauls in Western and Central Europe, and the Britons in the British Isles. The word Celt comes from the Greek word Keltoi, which means barbarian. It reflects how the Greeks saw their neighbors to the north, a dangerous nuisance to their peace and prosperity. By 200 BCE, the Celts had grown from a minuscule culture to a significant cultural force in Europe. They possessed a substantial advantage since they shared a common language and culture. Many tribes operating in Gaul, Switzerland, Germany, and Belgium had established strong trade links with the Greeks and the Romans, making them considerably wealthy. However, competition amongst the tribes, exacerbated by their lack of writing and dependence on raids, meant the Celts were also ripe for conquest. Rome was growing in power around this time and would soon become the dominant empire in the region, reshaping society and instilling Roman values and culture in many different cultures that fell under the jurisdiction of Rome. Treating Western civilization as a marriage between Christianity and Greco-Roman mythology is a prevalent notion. However, one could just as easily view it as a merging of classical Hellenistic values and Celtic paganism, 
that resulted from the Roman conquest of Celtic settlements. It is a near impossible task to name and describe every Celtic tribe and settlement. However, by looking at just a few, we can see how Celtic culture is so prevalent in Europe. It is hard to find a group not influenced by the Celts. Despite the lack of political unification amongst Celtic cultures, these many different civilizations were connected and identified with one another, mainly because of their linguistic similarities. The Celtic languages descended from Proto-Celtic, believed to have developed during the Hallstatt period, 1200 BCE to 450 BCE. It is a branch of the Indo-European linguistic group, meaning it belongs to the same family of languages that have produced modern-day tongues such as English, Spanish, French, German, Hindi, Punjab, Persian, Italian, and Portuguese. The Celtic linguistic group has two main branches, continental and insular. Insular Celtic refers to the version of the language spoken in what is now England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales, and Brittany. And Continental Celtic refers to the version spoken throughout the rest of Europe. Continental Celtic is extinct, whereas Insular Celtic still exists. It often pops up in the distinct languages of Gaelic, Welsh, Scottish Gaelic, Breton, spoken in Brittany, France, and to a lesser extent Manx, spoken on the Isle of Man, and Cornish, spoken in Cornwall. The various Celtic languages spoken today are typically divided into either Britonic or Goidelic, also known as Gaelic. Celtic is still spoken in some regions of continental Europe, but these linguistic groups speak a variation of Breton, which Britain settlers brought to the region. Other Celtic languages, such as Celtiberian, Galatian, and Gaulish, are no longer spoken in modern times. There are other regional languages, such as Lusitanian, spoken in parts of the Iberian Peninsula, Ration, spoken in parts of Switzerland and Austria, and Pictish, now extinct but once a strong language on the British Isles that may have originated from the Celtic language. The true origins of Pictish remain a mystery. Since the Celtics did not have a written language, they possessed a rich oral tradition. Brittany in France still wears its Celtic roots on its sleeves. French minstrels of Celtic roots informed foundational models of Renaissance storytelling in the High and Late Middle Ages. Whether it be Matteo Maria Boiardo's Orlando Inamorato, or Ludovico Ariosto's Orlando Furioso, the French and Italian literary tradition is steeped in Celtic influences. Over the decades, these texts served as cultural milestones, forever carrying the touch of Celtic lore. The social pedigree of Celtic cultures also facilitated oral storytelling. Roman sources describe the presence of druids in Celtic societies, who were learned spiritual guides and legal authorities. Under colonial pressure, some European peoples reverted to their Celtic roots in the 18th and 19th centuries. These groups, existing on the fringe of society, are referred to as the followers of a Neo-Druidism movement. Modern depictions of the Celts usually reflect the stories the Greeks and Romans told about them, mainly focusing on the Celtic obsession with warfare. However, most people living in ancient Celtic societies probably would have spent most of their time working in agriculture. They planted fields in square plots and stored food in clay pots that they often buried underground. There is also evidence of them raising livestock, mainly pigs, cows, and sheep. However, these farmers would join the local chieftain to fight when they were required to do so. The Celtic social organization has its roots in the warrior cultures of the Hallstatt and Laten periods. Warlords and chieftains were at the top, and they maintained their power by protecting farmers and other laborers who would also be required to fight for them when the time came. One's status as a warlord or chieftain was determined by wealth and military success. The more luxury goods one had, the more highly regarded one was in society, and the more successful raids one conducted, the more followers one could have. Raids were also a way to acquire more wealth, which is why they formed such an essential part of Celtic society. Below the warlords and chieftains were the intellectual class, this group was primarily composed of priests, but also artisans, poets, and legal professionals. Sadly, there is no evidence of what the Celtic legal system was like, so it is not easy to know what role these legal professionals played in society. Below the priestly class came the farmers and the laborers. These individuals had to promise their allegiance to a local warlord, who would provide them with security and the means needed to work the land and survive. There is also evidence that slavery existed in ancient Celtic culture, 
although it's difficult to know to what extent it impacted the overall social structure. We understand that the slave trade was one of the primary reasons for initial contact between the Celts and the Greeks and Romans, and that collecting enslaved people to be shipped to the south was often one of the primary reasons for raiding. One of the most celebrated aspects of Celtic culture today is its religion. We know the ancient Celts practiced polytheistic paganism. There appear to have been countless gods to whom the ancient Celts paid homage, and some of them remained firmly entrenched in the Celtic way of life despite the influence of Roman culture and later Christianity. However, as is the case with most of what we know about Celtic culture, their religion is shrouded in mystery. Fragments of the faith can be found in Celtic Christianity, which blossomed on islands like Iona and Lindisfarne. Although refuge of the pagan beliefs is the Irish mythology, which provides, according to some, a better reference than the Roman texts. Archaeological evidence, combined with the many texts of the Greeks and Romans, has allowed us to piece together the world in which the ancient Celts lived. Thanks to the work of Irish mythologists who undertook the effort to preserve pre-Roman Celtic religion, some aspects of Celtic culture still exist today. We may still associate them with Ireland, mainly because of the Celtic role in the rise of Irish culture. Still, there are many speakers of a Celtic language in Wales, and almost everyone in Europe can trace their ancestry back to at least one Celtic tribe. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Celts, check out our book, Celts, a captivating guide to ancient Celtic history and mythology, including their battles against the Roman Republic in the Gallic Wars. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.